Good morning, my fellow audio artisans. At Narrative Podcast, we are here because we believe everyone has a story to tell, and we want to help equip you to tell it. So a book I'm reading recently about the creative process is this one called How to Fly a Horse by Kevin Ashton. And I wanted to read this passage to you because it's perfectly aligned with our vision of trying to democratize storytelling and audio storytelling abilities. And this passage from this book was one of the most inspiring things I have read recently about the creative process and about how all of us have this capability to create. So here we go. When we look behind creation's curtain, we find people like us doing things we can do. This does not make creating easy. Magic is instant, genius an accident of birth. Take them away, and what is left is work. Work is the soul of creation. Work is getting up early and going home late, turning down dates and giving up weekends, writing and rewriting, revising and reviewing, rote and routine, staring down the doubt of the blank page, beginning when we do not know where to start, and not stopping when we cannot go on. It is not fun, romantic, or most of the time, even interesting. If we want to create, we must, in the words of Paul Gallico, open our veins and bleed. There are no secrets. When we ask writers about their process, or scientists about their methods, or inventors where they get their ideas from, we are hoping for something that doesn't exist. A trick, recipe, or ritual to summon the magic. An alternative to work. There isn't one. To create is to work. It is that easy and that hard. With the myth gone, we have a choice. If we can create without genius or epiphany, then the only thing stopping us from creating is us. There is an arsenal of ways to say no to creating. One, it is not easy, has already been addressed. It is not easy. It is work. Another is, I have no time. But time is the great equalizer. The same for all. 24 hours every day, seven days every week, every life a length unknown, for richest and poorest and all between. We mean we have no spare time. A blunt blade in a world whose best-selling literary series was begun by a single mother writing in Edinburgh's cafes while her infant daughter slept, where a career more than 50 novels long was started by a laundry worker in the furnace room of a trailer in Maine, where world-changing philosophy was composed in a Parisian jail by a prisoner awaiting the guillotine and where three centuries of physics were overturned in a year by a man with a permanent position as a patent examiner. There is time. The third no is the big one, the gun to the head of our dreams. Its endless variations all say the same thing. I can't. Here is the sour fruit of the myth that only the special can create. None of us think we are special. Not in the middle of the night, when our faces fluoresce in the bathroom mirror. I can't, we say. I can't because I'm not special. We are special, but that does not matter right now. What matters is that we do not have to be. The creativity myth is a mistake born of a need to explain extraordinary outcomes with extraordinary acts and extraordinary characters a misunderstanding of the truth that creation comes from ordinary people and ordinary work. Special is not necessary. All that is necessary is to begin. I can't is not true once we begin. Our first creative step is unlikely to be good. Imagination needs iteration. New things do not flow finished into the world. Ideas that seem powerful in the privacy of our head 
teeter weakly when we set them on our desk. But every beginning is beautiful. The virtue of a first sketch is that it breaks the blank page. It is the spark of life in the swamp. Its quality is not important. The only bad draft is the one we do not write. Once again, got an excerpt from How to Fly a Horse by Kevin Ashton. I hope you found this as inspiring as I did. Let's get to work.